Okay. Okay, so welcome everyone um, to this second session of our course in categorical software engineering for simulation model and modeling um, for system science. Uh, and uh, we have a couple goals for today um, consistent with course design, we are seeking to build up understanding of key concepts within this area uh, through interactive exercises, um, as well as take-home exercise homework um, uh, that sometimes involves offline components. And uh, this does require some previous exposure to category theory for some of the basics, but we will be reemphasizing some of the the concepts um, that are most uh, most key to um, the categorical approaches we're going to be speaking. So, um, to that end, I, I wanted today. Uh, to work with Xiao Yan, uh, my co-instructor here, to go through uh, the take-home exercise that I asked you folks to pursue, um, and uh, and to pursue that in an interactive way as well, using CatLab and, and from the Algebraic Julia ecosystem, uh, and make sure that we're all equipped to to use cat lab you know, within our own systems okay um okay so uh you'll recall that we uh had this take home exercise i'm going to call it up right here and we'll share my screen mm -hmm. uh okay um so uh, this take-home exercise asked us uh, to encode a graph structure like this, interpreting it on the one hand as a simple direct multigraph, classic graph, um, in from a category theory perspective, and then also interpreting it as sort of characterizing the evolution of a dynamic system. And in both those cases, we're characterizing it categorically, right? Using this construct of co pre sheaves, C sets, these mappings from C to set, right? Um, these functors from C to set. So we're going to be uh, encoding this graph, um, interpreting it first as a graph. And for, for, for the case of a graph, we have this schema category, GR, which sounds like a growl, but, but it's, it's actually a rather beautiful structure, um, even though it may sound unfriendly. Um, and uh, this, what's depicted here is a presentation of this schema category for a particular C, right? We're going to be considering a functor from the category, as we say, freely presented by this structure um, to set. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what will that functor do? So if we have a functor from this category to set, right? Um, do you remember what a functor maps? What is what is a functor map? Just building on our our memory for a category theory. What what does a functor do? What's its job? It maps what to what? Objects to objects, morphisms, identity to identity. So it preserves identity. It honors identity, and it honors composition, right? Um, and it guarantees, moreover, associativity. Right. Um, um, well, uh, that excuse me. That that's a property of a category. 
Corey. Um, okay, mumble. Um, yeah, but but it preserves the associativity. Yeah, preserves it. Um, okay, so um, here we have we have this schema category. We're going to consider functors from it into set. So for our graph up here. Um, We map objects to object, as Larissa said. So V is an object, and it maps to what set for this case? What's the set into which A, B, C, D? It's the set of the vertices of the graph, right? That's what V maps into, right? Um, what is Into what set does E map? We know, again, a functor maps objects to objects, so it maps E here to an object in set. An object in set is a, wait, wait, an object in set is a, an object in set is, so, so again, I'm just trying to emphasize the basics here. Um, a functor maps objects to objects. So an, it maps V to an object in set. What is an object in set? It's a set. Okay, it maps E to a object in set, which is a set. set. And what is that set for E? We said what it was for V. One, two, three, One, two, three four. Good. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Okay, now it maps, as Larissa said, morphisms to morphisms, right? So it maps the morphism source going from object E to object V in, in the schema category GR in this category um, uh, here for C. Uh, it's going to map that morphism into a morphism and set. And what is a morphism and set? Morphism and set, what do we call a morphism and set? It's a Morphisms and set are what? Uh, they're functions. They're functions. Morphisms and set are functions. They are. They map from one set, the, the set from which from which this function originates, the the domain of it, to the codomain, to the set to which it, it maps. Uh, it, it 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 yeah for the output for that function, right? Okay, so this maps source to some function, right? Some function from the set of edges to the set of vertices, right? So when we map this morphism over into set, it goes, remember, functors preserve the source and target of the things they're mapping over. So here in the schema category, source goes from E to V, the object E to object V. And the functor maps it to a morphism and set, which is a function going from the set mapped to by E to the set mapped to by V, right? Are we comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, if we, uh, I'm tempted to, to write this down, but if we, uh, yeah, if we have a, a a morphism F, which goes from I I have this, it's right here. Uh I have this. Um, I could I could use to draw this if we want. Um, uh, if we have a um uh, a morphism um in our schema category C, going from oh that's a rather um unflattering view um. Okay, uh, here we go. Uh, and I'm gonna call up my uh, nice little doodle place and I'm going to start to draw, right? So if we have a morphism in our schema category, so we have some schema category C and some C, some schema category C and we have a functor mapping over to set, a functor called F, capital F, right? And if we consider within C some morphism, call it A to B, right? F of 
of f, right, is going to itself go from where to where? Yeah, exactly. It's going to go. So when we map over source, it's going to go from functor applied to A, that's the set to which E maps, to the to the functor applied to V, the set to which V maps. In other words, it's going to, this source is going to map to a function in set, which goes from the set of edges to the set of vertices, right? Are we comfortable with that? I'm, I'm just want to make sure we're all on the same page with this, right? Okay. We good with that? Okay. So you're going to tell me for this graph, for this here graph, that there graph, right? Um, What is that function going to be mapping from edges, right? From the set of edges to the set of vertices. What's that function to which source maps when it's mapped over into set? What is that function? What is that function? You're going to tell me, right? It maps from edges to, to vertices, right? So the source function, the, the, this, this, the results of this mapping for source, right? It's going to go from, so if F, go, if F is from, for a particular F, right? If F goes from E to B, right? Now, F of F, maybe I shouldn't call us F, I'll call it, what do I call it? Source, right? Source. Um, F of source, right? Um, goes from F of E, right? Mm -hmm. To F of B. And this is the set of all edges, right? Set of edges. Mm -hmm. And this here thing, is the set of vertices, right? Are we okay with that? Um, forgive me for be labeling. I just wanna make sure we're all on the same page with this, okay? So, um, so uh, functor, uh, functor acting on, on uh, uh, objects and morphisms. Okay, happy, happy, okay. So you're going to tell me what is this? What is this function to which source maps? Yes, yes. Yeah. Set of edges uh, to a set of uh, source vertices or source. Set yeah, yeah. Vertices. So this is the type of it, and and the way it's going to play a role here is it's going to identify for a given edge the source of that edge, the vertex that source of the source of that edge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're gonna tell me what it is. You're gonna tell me the values of this. For each edge, I'm gonna tell you that name of that edge, and you're gonna tell me um, to what does it map for for the vertex. Okay, edge, edge one, what is the value to which it will map in the set of vertices? Source is A. For edge two, the source is what? B. For edge three, the source is C, and edge for the sources D, right? Now we know our ABCs, right? <laughs> right? Okay, um, good. Yeah, we're really emphasizing ABCs here. Yeah, um, okay. And, and again, just to make sure we're on the same page, target, right? Target is also gonna map the set of edges, the things mapped to by E, by the functor, so the set of things mapped to by V, right? A set of vertices. Okay, so what is what is target can, to what to what element of B is it going to map the element and map to by E of one? That's an element of edges and and yeah, it's gonna be B. How about two? C. Okay, how about three? D. D and how about four? D. Good. Okay. Okay. And and now we've learned our <laughs> B C D C's. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Happy yeah. Okay. Um great. So we've just specified 
to what these things match for E, for V, for target and source. And you're going to tell me, to what will ID E? So there's an identity morphism here. Okay, so it's going to map, just like Nona says, each edge, it's going to map it to itself, right? Because we know that it maps the set of, we know that the image of this, when it's hit by the functor, it's going to be a function which maps edges to edges. But we know more than that because the functor honors what? It honors, it preserves identity. So it has to map, a functor has to map identities to identities. Identities in the source, this is identity to the identities in the destination category, which is an identity function, which maps one to what, Nona? One to one, two to two, three to three, and four to four. And uh, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Are we all comfortable with that? J just want to make sure we're rock solid on that. Okay. So that fully specifies what this functor maps. Okay. Are we okay? Okay. Now let's go to this guy. So now we're going to interpret this as a as a dynamical as characterizing the evolution of a dynamical system so conditional being state a you go into state b the next time step condition in b being a b right now you go to c in the next time step condition in c you go to d next time step, and then you got it okay so you're going to tell me now we're going to encode it as this so we're going to have a mapping from this over into set right mm -hmm. and you're going to tell me you're going to tell me, remember, as, as Larissa said, in a stentorian voice, objects map to objects. What are the objects and sets? They are object and set are what? Speak on like a Greek chorus. The objects and set are what? They're sets. That's... Right. Okay, good. So what are the, so, so this state, object state here maps over to an object's to a set of states. What is that set of states here? A, B, C, a, B, C D. Good. Excellent. Okay. And now I'm going to ask another fairly easy one. What is ID state? That identity morphism, what does it map to over in set? A, B, C, D. Yeah. A to A, B to B. It's a function from the set of states, the set of states that's the identity function. We all good with that. Okay, now, what does next? Okay, it's 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 amorphism in DDS in the schema category, and it maps over in set into a what? In so so this morphism maps to a set. It maps to a function from what to what? What's the the oh, the, the main of the function is what? It's a set of states and the destination is the set of states. So yeah. it maps each state to a <laughs> next state, yeah, next right? State, yeah. for, for a given state, it says what the next state is. And you're going to tell me what the value of that function is because a function is defined by what it does on each element of the domain, right? The domain is that set of states, right? Right? Um, Ujay, am I boring you too much? No, 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 I, I made a mistake. I, okay. You just... Uh, okay. 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 Um, when um, we were told that we should say goal when we had a realization. Oh, okay. 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 Yes, I, I remember that. I love that. I love that. Goal, goal, goal. Um, okay. So next, what is... When we apply next... So, so again, it's going to map over to a function that maps each element of state to a particular other state and saying what the next state is. If you're in the source state, what does it map? To what does it map? So what is it, to what is it going to map A? A is a member of the set of states. What, what is next of A going to map to? 
to B. Good. What is next to B going to amount to? B and B. Yeah, C. C. And and if if we consider to where C maps, it maps to D. And where to where does D map? C. Okay, good. So that interprets it as a uh, as a state update, right? It's mapping a set of states to the next state as a finite state automaton. Okay, but now we asked another category or another question here that has some subtleties associated with it. Okay, so I'm asking, I'm asking, we're asking, Shayan and I are asking, um, how many morphisms are there actually in this? So, aha, uh -huh. so give me, give me, give me, one morphism in this uh in this category uh, uh, presented by this give me one morphism or give me two obvious ones they're even the colors of christmas identity and yeah identity and next like those are identity and state and, and next right those are two obvious ones but uj is exactly right are those all of them no no there's yeah. okay so we have Say, say it. We have, what other things do we have? We have things that are the k k k k compositions of these things, right? And the really interesting ones are compositions of, aha, uh -huh, right? Okay, okay, so we're gonna get to that. Nona, you're on to something as usual. That's exactly right, that's exactly right. You're thinking ahead. Great stuff. Okay, so give me one other. So we said ID of state and next, but give me another one that that it's not shown explicitly, but it's there in the category. What is it? What's another one that's there? Ujiro is exactly right. They're an infinite number. Give me another one. And and you're exactly right. It's produced by composition. So tell me what it is. What after what? next after the the next the yes next the next after the next the next after and in fact the next after the next after the next right yeah. and and what when we say it's a free category what is what does that no mean no. yeah it's minimally constrained it 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 is restricted to guarantee certain things that are defined in a, a the properties of a category it can't violate the properties of a category after all you know, if you compose identity with next, you have to get back what? It's a property of a category. If you compose identity with any with with another uh, another morphism, you get back what? Identity with any morphism in a category composed is what? Ooh. Is that other morphism right? If I if I compose an identity with a morphism M, I get back M. If I compose M with an identity, I get back M, right? Yeah, I think you're getting at something with associativity we'll get to in a minute possibly here and we'll, and we'll get to that so so what this is free is saying that you know there's um when you when you compose these morphisms unless it's required by the rules of a category it's going to be a new morphism it's going to be a, you know a, a novel morphism and next after next it's going to be a novel morphism it's not just we, we know because it's a free category it's not just next it's not just identity. Now, you know, not everything is free, right? Um, in this world. Um, so uh, lunch isn't free, right? <laughs> anyway, um, the uh, it, it's it's not that everything is free, but we could, uh, when we state that this is a free category, and, and, and what we're saying is it's freely generated by this, or, or we say that it's the free category presented by this, um, then we are saying that 
minimal constraints except where required by the definitions, like the definition of a category is the, is the main thing here. Okay, so next after next is guaranteed to be distinct from next in general, right? It's, it's gonna be distinct, okay. Now, next after next after next, right? Mm? Okay, so let's let's consider that. May we? May we? Um, right? Um, okay, so if we have here, let's 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 draw this out like Eugenia Chang urges us to do. Um, so if we have x to y, right? Um, uh, so actually, I, I should have been more artful like she is. Uh, we're gonna have w. We're gonna have w to x. And and actually, sorry, uh, um, we're gonna call state, we'll call state uh, the the one s. I'm just gonna denote it by s. Is that okay? Hearing no objections. Um, okay, so we're going to have s to s be, uh, we're gonna have a morphism next, right? Time to put an exclamation. Right? Um, as as David Spivak tends to do in his polynomial functors one. Um, and then we'll have another one here next, right? Um, if we have next after next, we're guaranteed by the rules of a of a category, any two morphisms n to n, we have to be able to compose, right? Yeah. And so this will be next. And uh, we could say next after next, or what's the other way of writing it? So the max and in the fat semicolon. Yes. Yeah. Um. Um. Something like like that. Um. Um. Often I'll just write it with a little. Hey, get that. Um. I'll just write it like that with a mm -hmm. circle. Um. Here it's this one first, then that one. This one is this one first, then that one. And often for intuitions, it's nice to do. So we're guaranteed to have, and for any two, to have, have a morphism that's a combination. But there's nothing in a category that says this has to be distinct. The free category, this will be distinct unless forced by other rules of the category, right? Rules of engagement. Okay, so now let's consider this one. As Nona was, was encouraging us to do so here we go next right next and now i'm gonna ask ask you we have this mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. um now i'm gonna claim that there's one here next and after next, after next, but I'm gonna instead write it with the fat semi because I, I think it kind of flows from left to right here better. Is, is that okay? Okay, okay. I, I know preferences for these things differ. Okay, so I'm gonna claim to you that when I write this, it doesn't matter whether I write it this way or whether I write it, I'm sorry, it's like adding insult to injury. You have to put up with my handwriting first, then you have to put up with my egregious lack of artistic skill next. Um, okay, so there we go. And I, I'm, I'm claiming it doesn't matter if it's like this or this, why is that? What do we have? What is it? Uh, it's free. Well, it's actually not that it's free. It's uh, no constraints, right? Yeah, you. So it has no const. Well, but this is guaranteed by what? Associative. Associativity, right? You might think that. Oh well, well look. I mean, this this yields one of these, and and then you add something to it, you get a totally different one than if you add this one here this here one um and then you added this to it you might think well wait but it's a free category there's gonna be 
totally different things. You know, if if I have this guy uh, here, this here guy, and then I add that to it, it's, you might think by by the rules of freeness, it, you, you tell me, add any two, it'll be different. Um, uh, it'll be a different one. It's free. No, but no, this this is rock solid guaranteed by the rules of engagement of a category. A category says we don't have to worry where these parentheses are because categories are well behaved, as, as Eugenia Chang assured us. Remember that? She said, you know, the, the notion of category is crafted to be this good balance of power and generality at the same time being well behaved. It doesn't drive us crazy because we have to we have to deal with non-associativity, which you know um, would be distracting to say the least, right? Um, so here, these even though it's free, these are guaranteed to be the same. Do you do you do you understand that? Because it's part of the rules of category. So not everything in in a free category is different. You know, you 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 combine you know, this first, this first, and then that is, it's not different from this and then that. They're guaranteed to be the same by the rules of categories. Okay? Can't... Right, right. We're not adding extra rules. That's exactly right. We're not saying, oh, if you do, if you do, here, I'm going to draw my dynamical system. Um, uh, if, if, you don't mind if I do. Um, here we go. Mm -hmm. um, if I do, if if I have this, you know, uh, next, I don't have a rule like, you know, in, in general, if, if I had a category, it looks something like this, F, and a, I'll even, if you don't mind me indulging you, just to leave nothing to the imagination, this will be ID of, Call it. I'm gonna call it Q for some reason. Um, Q. Okay. Um, if I had this, I could have a rule like F after F equals ID, right? ID Q, right? And I could say this after this equals that. That would not. Is this a free category? Is, it, is this a free category here? No, because it ain't no free category. I'll tell you that. No, it ain't no free category. It is free. It's not. It's not a free category. It's not free category. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I I need to teach you some American English. I need to learn you some American English. Okay. Um. Sorry. I I corrupting the diction of of stalwart citizens of Canada here. Um. And I'm sorry. I I. I, I am I am engaged in American imperialism and I need to I need to apologize to my Canadian brethren. Um, um, so yeah, I apologize. but um, this this is not a free category. this this is yeah, it is pretty weird if you think about it in England. this is this is not a free category um, if I were to impose that. So this is what this is of what Nona spoke to to resume proper Queen's English. Um, by contrast, we have a free category here, ge freely generated by this, okay? Mm -hmm. So so here, there's actually, you know, a um, countably infinite number of morphisms, um, uh, you know, in in this, right? It's, it's a countable infinity, right? Um, so there's like one for each natural number, um, yeah. Something like that. This is zero. This is one, two. Are we okay? Okay. Now, um, so what's that? No, he's he's just commenting that oh. it's no longer the Queen's English. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, so I lapsed. Yeah, um, it's King's English now. Oh, it's the can. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, you're, you're quite right. I, I misspoke. and misidentified our our sovereign. Uh, mm. Okay. Yeah. No. I. I. I erred. Um. Thank you. Um. Uh. So. Um. Uh. Okay. Um. So, given this, I. 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 I asked you a, a question. I asked you. Wait a minute. If this is free, 
if, as Ujie said, if, if there's infinitely many of these, these morphisms, this is just a presentation of the category. This is showing the generators, but from these generators spring forth freely here, as free as possible. That doesn't mean everything is distinct, but free things are distinct within the rules of categories, right? If, if there's an infinite number here, do we have to specify for our functor, you know, what next after next is? Do we have to specify what next after next after next is? Do we have to specify each of those? Have have we have we fallen grievously short of specifying our functor because we only specified what it does on how it maps objects to objects, as Larissa pointed out? Um, morphisms to morphisms for these two morphisms. That's all we specified. What it does for next. But have we fallen grievously short of fully specifying it? Have we left out, you know, essentially everything because we didn't we only specified for two morphisms out of a countably infinite number? Have we fallen short? Have 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 we failed to specify the functor? Have we failed as of no? Have we failed? Have we, the answer is no, we did not fail. We have actually fully specified the functor. And what is it about functoriality? What is it about the properties of a functor that mean all we have to do is specify it for the generators and everything else follows? Because functors honor what? They honor identities, but the other thing they honor is what? It's not our sorry. Composition. Sorry? Composition. Composition. And so next after next, so if we consider the function to which next maps, right? Um, next maps to some function, right? Over in set, right? Function from state to the set of states, the set of states, right? Mm -hmm. If we consider, so let's consider here um, F, so so we'll call f of next let's call it um i'm gonna call it g okay it's a function this, this here is a function and set okay this is a function and in set are we okay with that mm -hmm. okay so what i'm telling you is because of the properties guaranteed by a functor how it works, functoriality. If we have f of next after next, what is this guaranteed to be equal to for a functor? Oh, okay, but what's on the right-hand side here? This thing is... It preserves the composition. It preserves the composition. So tell me what to write. G. So, okay, uh, sorry. Uh, um, okay, so it, yes, it will, will involve G, but tell me, okay, I'm just going to write it, okay? Here we go. Um, F of next after next is, it's this, right? And this is G after G, right? Which is the composition of the function G, supplying G to itself twice. And so, the fact that this is the case, that it preserves functoriality, means all we have to do is specify it for these generators. Just specify it for what it does to ID, which is, it maps it to an ID function. What it does to next, which maps it to the next function. Everything else follows. Do you see that? Yeah. Powerful. It's powerful. It provides us that tool to specify this in terms of generators and relations in general these these cases so we well we could call these a relation but here it's a it's an it's a free category are we okay with that okay hearing no objections may, may we continue on are we okay 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 so i am going to so if if we're okay with are people comfortable with this shall yan and I are trying to make sure everyone is comfortable following along and that you have a really good sense, both intuition and a really good 
sense of grokking like why this all fits together. Why we only have to specify two of these when we specify what a function does. Well, in fact, we only have to specify this one. This one is totally given by the definition of a functor, right? Everything else follows. And this notion of this presentation of a category just needing to specify these, these in this case, the um, uh, the generators, right? Do you, do you get that point? And then the rest will will follow. Okay, so so this is part of this class, making sure people are following along. So anyone who wants to ask questions right now, no shame. You know this is this is. Uh, Thanks for clarifying that. I made a mistake in my assignment, so I just I realized the, the my mistakes after listening to your. Oh okay, glad, glad if it's if if it's useful. Okay. It's useful. Now, can I can we now with Xiaoyan's great assistance, she made this all possible. Can we go through this computationally with CatLab? Do I have your permission? Okay, no one will be outraged. Huh? Okay. So so we will now transition from um from Beautiful picture. Well, not so beautiful. <laughs> Ter terribly ugly, probably. Pictures to to um to now uh, work computationally. Okay. So to that end, I am going to walk you through and and really this is a, a combination of people who have uh, helped make this uh, possible. Okay. So I am going to show you with docker um we're going to stop this docker this docker uh container which i had up i'm going to switch it down here and and we have this container that eric put together for stock flow right yeah i think we have put three Th three um, oh yeah he, he created three wonderful uh containers which bundled together different sets of things like stock flow or algebraic yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. and rewrite algebraic rewriting and we're going to be using them and I, I want people to be able to follow along so what i'm going to do here uh is i'm going to actually close docker Docker desktop, and now I'm going to call it up. Just let's go from basics. May we go from basics? Okay, I'm not hearing, you know, uh, people revolting in a in a in a in objecting strongly. Okay, now where's my? Oh no, now, I, now I'm really in trouble. Okay, where's my where's my Docker? Where'd my Docker go? I just called up Docker. Oh my goodness. Uh oh, now I'm in, now I'm in trouble. Okay, where's my Docker? Oh gosh, oh no. Okay, I thought I'd do it from basics and I can't even get off the in, ground. In my Mac, it's always like a head here. So oh yeah, yeah, there's you a- can, You can check your, like, the there, there you go, go to dashboard, okay. Yeah. There we go, okay. EJS saves saves the prop, okay, okay. Um, okay. Mm. Here's, here's my Docker saved from the- from from ignominy. Okay. Um okay, so this is this um this Docker container which Eric Conley provided or this Docker image that based on a Docker image. Um and we're going to fire up this container. Okay. Are we okay? So we're gonna start it up. And this contains its own little world, you know, running on and, Linux and, and totally reproducible, um, its own virtual machine, as it were. And I'm going to call up um, in this, uh, we're going to be in uh, some examples. And, and if I had presence of mine, I would have deleted this. I'm going to show you how you can do it. So I'm going to, hey, hey, oh man, uh, delete, uh, delete. There we are. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, the stock flow 
Ya. Wait, so, uh, update to version of what? Of stock flow? Uh. Oh, okay. Alex Allegra released an update to stock flow, which fixes a bug. And you're saying that it would be handy to have version, what's the version you'd like? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so you already provided Eric the information. Okay. Okay, zero, zero, two. Okay. Okay. So uh so here we go. Um we're inside this Docker container and we're viewing it through this port, right? We're 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 running Jupyter notebook within this container, or running the server for it, and we're connecting to it through a browser. I'm going to upload into this container this, oh, um, we need to distribute it to them, right? Or did we, did I already post it? No, no, no. I didn't post it. Okay, so we need to post it to chat, okay? Yes, the King's English. Um, okay. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to do a screenshot. I want to send a file. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Um, Hey, hey, I want to go to downloads. There we are. I'm going to post it. So ladies and gentlemen, it's it's waiting to be downloaded. It's called one underbar CSAT underbar V2. Okay, dot IPNYB. This is a Python, Jupyter Python notebook, right? Or, or Jupyter, Jup, uh, Julia, Julia, no, Python. Jupiter, Julia. Jupiter, Julia notebook. Thank you. I don't know why it's a pie. Um, I got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so you can upload it into your Docker container. Are you following along? Based on the thing I distributed via chat? Uh, I don't know your, your uh, code, but something wrong with my Docker container. I just run it in the lab. It doesn't work now. So okay. yeah, maybe you could just take a look. Okay, did you shut it? Uh, shut down a previous one. Okay. Okay. So what I'm so, so I'll I'll let Chayan work with. Uchiha, I'm going to double click on that. What did I just do? Uh, folks, I just double clicked on this and up comes my Jupyter notebook. Okay. Okay. Are we okay with that? No, no. Are things going okay there? Or Okay. Okay. Um show you what's what's the yeah, what pathology is exhibited by it's, it's, it's already allocated. Yeah. So I think maybe so maybe it's still running. Yeah, I'm just delete that and then put it away. Yeah, you can stop if you if you have a Docker container, you can stop it, Ujia, here. You can uh I don't know if you need to stop it, but uh, I mean you could also set up a different port, right? Yeah, okay. 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 So I um I uploaded it, right? And and then I double clicked on it to run it. I want people to be able to follow along here. Um okay. So I I uploaded it via this upload button and then I did this. No um Sure, yeah, maybe you want to check out what's going on over over there. Okay. Now Chayan deserves all the credit for this, and I deserve all the blame for the mistakes. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna go through the same examples, if we may, with with cat lab code. Is that okay? Okay. So 
we are going to go back and mumble. Um, where is my, okay, this is not one I, here it is, and take home exercise. We'll, we'll have that in a separate thing. Okay, so here's our, remember our graph here? We encoded it. We described what the encoding was, right? Okay, so we're going to be encoding this in two different ways. One using this schema and one using this schema with the dynamic discrete dynamical system. Are you are you ready for this? Okay. Okay. So the first will be the schema graph, the graph schema, the GR schema. Okay? So here we are. This is our Jupyter notebook. And I think you all know how to use Jupyter notebooks. If you don't, you can go here and press control enter and it'll be running for a little bit. So it used cat lab. Okay, now this next thing, this is, this is rather important. Remember I said that this is a presentation of a category and you might've been forgiven for not really thinking that's that significant, but it made a lot, it was an important thing here. There's a presentation of, of, of a category freely, it's, it's, there's a category DDS freely presented by this, meaning this is not, what's shown is not the whole category. We, by convention, we don't show, you know, the compositions of things, right? And by convention, we don't even show them. Yeah, at any morphisms, right? Um, but this is a presentation of a category here. Are we okay with that notion? It presents generators the actual category is many other things generated by this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do here is encode this schema that's presented by this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's a presentation of a schema and we specify it with generators and relations, just like what we do with these. We specify generators and you can specify can specify relations like this saying like f composed with f is identity right um okay so we're going to specify this as generators and relations in catlab so there's two objects v and e are we comfortable with that um in the category we're presenting um and there's a source morphism from it's a hom it's a it's a it's part of the hom set from e to v mm, is is source remember that idea of a hom set from our previous course um the hom set of things from one object to another are describes the set of morphisms right so source is a member of this hom set from e to v and dest is a member of this hom set you notice it puts a col double colon here. It's saying, what type of thing is this? These are objects. These are members of this type Tom set. I say type because it knows they go from E to V. Those are kind of the types. You, you okay with that? So this is the presentation of our category. Are we good with that? Okay. And in CatLab, I, I believe it's fair to say, Shayan, I asked Shayan earlier, because Shayan is the real expert at on, on, you know, locally on a lot of these things. I believe when you say a schema like this, so in CatLab, um, unless you put equations, equations like these equations here, uh, unless you impose equations, it's the free category. It's the category freely generated by this presentation. So it it's not, you are specifying here generators. And you can specify relations in the form of these equations that have to hold. But here, there's not much to specify because really there's no, there's no non-trivial, you know, like what composition do you have to consider source after IDE or IDV after source? It's not so interesting. Okay, so, so this is our sort of free schema, okay? Um, and now we're going to ask to visualize it here. And one of the nice things about running this in a Docker container is it's all set up, thanks to Eric's hard work, it's set up to have appropriate graph viz and stuff, okay? Are we okay with that? Okay. 
Okay, now, what are we doing here? We're specifying an atchet type. So we're going to have a, we'll come to the A, a part of it, but this is going to be a C set, which is, you, you remember from our, from our um, exercise, right? Um, a C set, right? Um, here, right? We're declaring the C set here. It's going to be with um, uh, this instance of this schema. Um, by instance, I mean, this is going to be a type describing a mapping from this schema or the schema present, freely presented by this to set, okay? So that's going to be our sort of type of, of instances. And, uh, uh, and and Chayan, this this thing here, you're just showing how you can, like, why is it that? Oh, I see. Right, so you need you need to instantiate it here. I need, no, this is just an example. An example showing, showing the oh. the initial the the mm -hmm. initial value of um of the, this instance category. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of the trivial one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, Everything's empty. Or vacuous. Everything is empty. Yeah. The set of V is empty. Yeah. The set of E is empty. Yeah. And, so, you know, yeah. source and target are kind of vacuous functions from empty set to yeah. empty set. Okay. Now, um, for this, this, now we have uh, AC set uh, that's not trivial, right? Yeah. Notice up here, this was a schema, this is a presentation for a, a category, right? Just like this presented a category or this presented a category, it was for this category. So that was a schema um, category being presented by this. Are we okay with that? Again, before I tried to you know, give you this notion of presentation is different from the category itself. Presentation consists of the generators and relations, but then there's a category behind it. Okay, here we have an AC set being defined that's of this instance type. It's a, it's a C set from schema GR to a set, right? And what is this? You tell me, this graph, how many vertices does it have? Five, how many edges does it have? Mm. Good. Um, and and we might think, um, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, uh, so this is, um, so is this graph here depicted by this or no? The answer is Does this have five vertices? Oh uh, yes. Oh no, you? No, 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 no. Okay. So no. you're you're gonna tell me. So this is an ex a little example. This is giving so how do we read this? Let's let's learn to read this example and then let's correct it for our case. Are we okay with this? Okay. So how do we read this? That, so so this is the count of vertices. This is the count of edges. And it helps. Does anyone remember fin set? There's a category fin set. Anyone remember what it is? Finite. Finite sets. And actually, we dealt a lot with skeleton, skeleton of fin set, which is basically every, so it has one set of every saw, every cardinality. So one set of size zero, one of size one, one of size two, one of size three, only one. It's like all the isomorphic ones are collapsed. So the set of two roses, the set of two cars, the set of two professors, the set of two computers, the set of two trees, they're all isomorphic, right? And so we collapse them into a single one. And so this is kind of like that. We're saying this: it's the set five of vertices, the set five of edges. What is this source? What is this saying? What is this saying? So I'm saying this is a function. This here is a function. What function is it? 
think it's saying that mm -hmm. um, the source for the uh, arrows at this index, you're going to have a source that is mm -hmm. this. That's right. And remember where source, that's exactly right. Exactly right. Where, where does source go from? It goes from E to V, right? So this is just reading off for each element of what? Of each edge. Each, yeah. edge, each element of E, it's saying what is the, the source of that? What is the vertex for that, right? Yeah. Are we okay with that? So, so let me let me sharpen this a bit. Let's suppose we had a graph that had three vertices and and five edges, right? Three vertices and five edges. How big would source be? How many how many how many items in it? So three vertices, five edges it would still be five blank. But what would be different from this? You can only have the numbers one, two, three. You can only have the numbers one, two, three. You've got it exactly. Only the numbers one, two, three. Larissa has got as not. Okay. One, two, three. Same thing with target. Right? So the length of this is given by the domain, the, the number of elements in this set, right? And, and the, the 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 values in it can be of size between one and the size of this codomain, right? Um, are we okay with that? Yeah. So let's encode together now, all at once. Let's encode this graph. Can we not? Okay. So you're gonna tell me. So we're gonna we're gonna go here. We're gonna we're gonna actually let's 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 create a new one. Okay, Shoyan. Help me, show you and Help me. Yeah, okay. So I, what do I do? K-A or something? There's a little plus. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's newfangled. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. So, um, so G, so my graph, right? Our, our take home <laughs> mathematicians hate, hate this <laughs> exercise one graph. <laughs> they got me kicked out of the American Mathematical Society conference or something. Like, get out, get out of here. Uh, roll out of here. Um, um, <laughs> okay, how, how for, for this one, how many, so you're gonna tell me what, what should be on the first line here? Four, because there's four vertices. What should be on the next line here? Four, because there's four edges, right? Four, okay. And okay, so what are you gonna? What's gonna be in each of these ones? J one. Okay, one. And and where'd the one come from? It's yes. the yeah. for the first edge. What the source of it is? And A is one. B is gonna be one. C is gonna be one. E. I wish I could call them A, B, C, D, but that that will come later. <laughs> We're learning our pre ABCs, right? <laughs> okay, so first is one. What's the second? The source of two is what? B, which is two. Good. The source of three is C, which is three. And the source of four is D, which is four. Okay, right? This can't be more than, if I put five, what would, why why is that impossible? Because we only have four vertices or four edges. Or four vertices. Four vertices. Okay, you're gonna tell me what target is. Okay. So for the first for the first one, what is target? B, which is two. 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 Okay, for two, for edge two, target is what? C, which is three. Okay. And for edge three, the target is what? D, which is four. And for edge four, the target is C, which is ed, which is what? Three. 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 Oh, yes. Okay. Are we okay with that? And there we go. And it's defined, a thing of beauty. Hmm? 
There it is. It's encoded as a database table. Do you see that? It gives me no small joy to see that. It's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. This is the primary key here. This is the this is the the uh, sort of the identity <laughs> the result of the identity arrow. You could think of it. Yeah. yeah. I, I believe it's just a set of fours. Yeah, it's a set of four, the first, second, third, and fourth. Yeah, uh, edge. Yeah, edge is seven. Edge is set of four, right. So collectively, this is a set of edges. Yeah. These are foreign keys. They're foreign keys into what table? Source, when I say three, this is a foreign key into the table of what? these the because taria this is a vertex say eh? uh um okay um how come it doesn't show the v's yeah, show you show v. yeah yeah the reason is because currently v it's only have the primary oh so it doesn't bother so, yeah, right. can we ask it to do it or can it cannot uh, basically no i mean if okay. either later if yeah. the vertices have the like it have any column, extra column, then the V will show. show. I see. Okay. I think it's like some definition pet level. Okay. 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 So now we're gonna encode it like this. Mm -hmm. Can we encode it like this? Can't cannot. Okay. Okay. Um okay. Uh so this is the presentation of this category, right? Mm -hmm. Remember we said this earlier? Is this shown the category? Is this all of the category? What's shown here? Is it is 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 that all of the morphisms in the category that are what are shown? The green and the blue. No, no. It's these are tell the generators whence the the full category is is generated freely, right? According to the rules of category, right? Mm -hmm. So the same thing occurs here. We have the presentation of this schema. By the way, all this credit for this goes to Shayan, who put together this, this wonderful little little nice set of code. Okay, so this is the presentation of this, and there's this the object, right? And then there's next, right? Mm -hmm. Why why don't we have to give the identity on state? Well, it's always there, right? Any category. Each object has an identity morphism, right? So we don't have to give it, included. right? What's that? It is included. It's included, yeah. And moreover, this these are the generators. And so we know from this, it freely generates these things, right? So we don't have to specify next after next, next after next after next. We don't have to say next after next, next after next after next. You know, um, is is different from next after next after next after next, right? Right? We don't have to say that um, because it follows from the rules of a category, right? Um, so, so we just specify the gender. Do, do you get that? This is, this is these are important foundational concepts, but they're also they're beautiful and useful, just like categories. The power and the glory of it are just incredible. Okay, it's powerful and it's useful in profound ways. Okay, can we see this? So I'm gonna I'm gonna run it as I am want, and now I'm gonna visualize it, and there we see it—a thing of beauty, is it not? Mm. Okay, now we declare C C sets of this, but actually they're attributed C sets. But we'll come back to that later. Okay, so so there, and then here's kind of the the vacuous one. Um, and now we're going to encode this as a as as one of these. We're going to encode this this here graph as sorry, I'm lapsing into my native vernacular. Sorry, um, we're going to encode uh, this fine graph uh, as uh, an instance of this category, of this DDS category. May we do this? Okay, now it needs a name worthy of its definition. Um, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go down there and 
and hopefully the mathematicians won't in one fell swoop cast me out of their company and condemn me to this. Okay, and Shayan told me to do the plus. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, oh, okay, now uh, uh, as GR. <laughs> Uh, as DDS. DDS. DDS, thank you. And um, okay, and and now we need to uh, do this and do this. And you're going to tell me what to put here. What do I put here? Okay, so here we are. Okay, so the states are what? Can, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's, what am I doing? States are what for A, B, C, D. And what is next for them? Like, what's um, what would next of of one be? Okay, but let's go one at a time. Okay, what's next of one? If if we're in state one, what's next? B is two. Two. Okay, if we're in B, what's next? three if we're in if we're in three if we're in state three what's next four if we're in four what's next three are we okay with that okay or not okay hearing no objection okay um okay um now okay and now we'll get a glimpse of something more. Shayan, is, is now a good time for me to? Yeah. Okay, simple. Do you want to say something about this? Or or do you want me to say something about it? Okay. Okay. Shayan is, is the woman who's made so much of this possible. So um okay. So now we're going to we're we're actually going to um be true or or more fully realize the potential of something that we've been seeing all along, but I've kind of brushed under the rug. We've been talking about AC sets, not merely C sets, not merely, ladies and gentlemen, these maps from, hey, where, 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 where am I? Hey, where, hey, oh my goodness, what what's going on here? Okay, here we go. Hey, oh my God. Um okay, there we go. Um that was, that was exciting. Um that was called free key press. Um okay, but AAA is is this it, so it doesn't matter if you parenthesize it as AA and then A or A and then AA. It's all the same AAA. Right, and so screen concatenation is associative. That's a deep truth, and it was illustrated in a rather powerful way. Okay, so these are AC sets, and so we're going beyond merely maps from a category C to set to something more sophisticated, attributed C sets, and we'll talk about these. But just to whet your appetite, just to give you a sense here, we're going to have a graph schema the 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 same schema that we defined earlier for this year category this this basic directed multi -graph. and we're going to so where this is giving us a sense of being able to reuse this sort of subtyping it almost and we're going to extend it with an attribute type called name such that each what is going to have a name each vertex is going to have a name. Can we do that? And the name is going to be it, it's 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 going to be able to be a type. We it doesn't have to be just a reference to a table of names. It can be a a, a type like string within within Julia, or it could be an int, or it could be a double. Right. In this case, I think a string is a nicer name, but we could choose for other attributes like. An in, in int or double, even. Even, a pair. even a pair. Yeah, good point. Okay, okay. Now we can we can depict this, right? What what is this thing? Where have we seen that before? 
schema. Yes, the schema of graph, right, right here. Right? But now we have an attribute. Each what has an attribute, each vertex. Are we okay with that? Okay, and now we're gonna define an, an, an atchet type. These are called atchets, the way it's pronounced. I frankly find that rather, a, a, rather an unpalatable. I, what's that? I, I, I tend to read it as AC said. Yeah. For me, a, a hatchet is a rather dangerous <laughs> instrument. Um, um, okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I must have mistyped something. Maybe you have typed the twice because it have oh. already defined. So oh. I mean, oh. that's okay. Yeah, it's like oh. you have defined it twice. Oh, I defined it twice. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, and we can we can do this. Okay, um, and now we could define. Oh yeah, um, we can now define. And Shaoyan is as normal ahead of us. We can we have these four vertices a b c d just just like nona for what nona ordered um four vertices with names a b c d this is indicating a a, a symbol right a symbol within um within julia there's four edges right and here we go she was ahead of us, two steps ahead all the, all along. Here we go. And we have, and now it presents both V and E, right? Each mm -hmm. vertex has a name worthy of it, mm -hmm. A, B, C, D. And for each edge, like let's say edge two, edge two in our diagram, mm -hmm. edge two in our diagram goes from which vertex to which vertex? Can you say? B to C. And look, how do we read this off? Where's the B? You tell me. How do I find the B? I'm considering edge two. And how do I see the B? Two is a foreign key into this table. So it looks up, it goes B, two, three, C. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, um, and uh, and now we could define uh, an. Oh, uh, this is oh, this is for DDS. Yeah. Now we have DDS um, uh, for the discrete dynamical systems definition, right? Yeah. Now we're defining that, giving each. What a name, each what? Each state a name. And you'll notice once again, um, the affordances of, of, of CATLAB here, um, it allows us to sort of subtype it. Okay? Um, so it's it's drawing on the schema of DDS. Where, where was the schema of DDS? Well, it was earlier, right? Remember that? We defined it. We defined it right here. See that? And it, it has all those things. It's kind of inheriting them. But it's further extending it with state names. Do you see that? See or not? Yeah. Okay, okay. Here we go. Here's the state and it has a name. It's okay. Um, And uh, here we go. And we're going to define this thing as a discrete dynamical system with named states. Mm -hmm. And the states will be A, B, C, D, right? There are four of them. The state names are symbols. What are these things? What is S name? S name is a what? Yeah, and it's an speak on attribute. Yeah, it's an attribute. You you notice that Cheyenne defined that attribute as being of I should have emphasized this of type what symbol, so it you know it, it's kind of nice because it's a set of categorical possibilities we might call them nominal data it's one of these set of possibilities she didn't use string she used symbol 
and rightfully so, because it's a set of discrete possibilities here. It's not just any old string. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, kind of like any num um, in some languages. So A, B, C, D are the state names. So we got that. And then we have next defined like this, right? Um, and and that, that, dear viewers, finishes this little example put together so well by Shao Yan. This finishes the example. And indeed, it finishes this lecture. Mm -hmm. But except for the most important part, which is student questions. So what questions can we answer? Yes. I probably missed something. Like only in uh, CatLab, the vert, vert, vertex is AC set, but theoretically it's just a set. Sorry, vertex is an. Yeah, it's something like that because me, me so that the other has... code is like all the vertex is like. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm not oh. thinking, yeah. The thing is, like in theory, ABCD is also a set. Right. Yeah. yeah. So why why they use that? Yeah. In the, in that for way. attributes, why do you use AC sets? Why do you use attributes? Like? Yeah. No, no. For for vertex, they they, they consider it as an AC set. Oh. Why? Well, it's just the name of a vertex. So they think name is a string, so it's an attribute. So well. An AC set. Oh. Yeah. So. I think it's something like a data structure. Need the catalog to define a category and the instance of category. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, I mean, so in general, you know, we it's quite often so without that, what we're dealing with is kind of values drawn from fin set, right? Like, like let, let's consider this, right? Really, we have four states, but we don't know their names, right? They're just anonymous things called one, two, three, four, right? Mm -hmm. And and we can refer to them, but you know, for real world databases, if you had a database of employees or a database of people working in your hospital or whatever, like you don't just want everyone to have numbers. <laughs> Who are you? I'm 37. You know, I'm or I oh you're wow you're you're really low I'm two hundred thirty three um you know um you don't like at some point you want to get down to reference to names and to quantities and and more than that you're not going to probably want a table of all possible double precision values right. At some point, you want to be able to associate things like someone's viral load with a double precision value without having just be a reference to a table of, of uh, double precision values, right? Mm -hmm. we, we, we want something that, as, as valuable as it is to view the data structures as, as databases, I mean, at some point, we often want quantities that can't be easily reduced to to a kind of um, a, a tab a tabular form. And again, you, you don't want a table of all possible doubles, and then everything as an index into that. You instead want to be able to say, "Well, my viral load is this double precision value." Mm -hmm. I'm talking about attributes, like why why attributes? Now, the question of how attributes are represented is a deeper one. It will get us into profunctors and and there's a beautiful story with that, but it, it's a bit more complex and we're gonna tackle it soon, but one step at a time. And I think we'll do some things prior to getting to that. And then we'll see there's actually a very nice story categorically for how you can capture these sort of quantities. Um, yeah, Shayan, do you want to say anything about that too? Um, yeah, I think I I agree with what Yujie has com comments. It's like mathematically, actually, so for this exercise, it is a C set. Yeah. So the reason it is actually a C set is because we we want to use a good data structure to 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 have generally 
represent all of those data like in the table. It's yeah. like the primary key is always the one, two, three, four. Three, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Wow, that's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alice yeah. Bob, something. Yes, yes. Yes. No, yeah. 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 I mean, it, and, and that's it. And that's why I'm emphasizing this is kind of, you can think of this as saying that set here, like for a plain old C set, a plain Jane sort of um, uh, uh, bog simple C set, a traditional C set. It's, it's almost like each object. And for a C set, you're saying what each object is out of as an as a set in in fin set, like it's the set of four elements, it's the set of five elements, it's the set of a peer too, you know, um, four elements and four elements. Um, so. As far as I know, in Cat Lab, we don't have the luxury of saying, "This is the set of Alice Bob," you know, as a as a set. You can't say V equals, you know, A B C. You can't say that. Um, you're specifying sort of it in in the skeleton of fin set that it's the set of size four, the set of size four, and and you know that's that's great for small examples, but at some point you generally want some sort of data. And again, for more or less continuous data like real numbers, you, you definitely want a different representation. And attributes allow us to associate not just foreign keys with things, not just to have the objects be foreign keys into another table, like these are foreign keys into the V table. Um, uh, attributes allow us to actually put data within a given table, if you see what I mean. And that's valuable, right? Like at a practical level, that's that's valuable. And we make use of them you know, in, in stock flow. Shalyan has made good use of them. Yeah, I think maybe in our future lecture, we will have some comments like mm -hmm. the the pros and cons for the attributes. I mean, it's uh, like I feel attributes are powerful, but but, you, but as, yeah. as we as we try to find the function between uh, from the sub clause, it's called a loop. We always like yeah. have problems with the attributes, right? That's the cons. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No problem, right? Yeah. 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 So so there's a beautiful story with C sets that's just gorgeous. And in fact, we haven't seen half of it. I mean, um, you know, there's nice categorical encoding here. But where it gets really much nicer yet is in these in these data migration functors and stuff like that. And it's a beautiful story. It's a conceptually simpler story, et cetera. And this gets, and even with rewriting, it's a very nice story with C sets. But once you get attributes and attribute variables, it, it's powerful, but maybe a bit less beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a, a lesson I have learned is like, I need to be careful if I like to use the attributes. Yeah. It's like, I don't want the attributes to be too complex, then it may be causing the problem. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll, I think we'll talk about the yeah. pragmatics and Shaoyang can speak from, you know, deep lived experience about that. She's struggled. She's worked with them for a long time and struggling. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a struggle. Um, yeah. By the way, whilst we were in this class, Eric built and deployed the new Docker image for the version you wanted. Yeah. So Eric's awesome. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Um, hope that was useful. And kudos to Shayan for you know putting together the the nice little cat lab. But uh, we're going to try to keep this going where there's going to be some discussion of making sure people are following along in the theory, but also you know lots of interactive stuff. Mm -hmm. And we'll be building up these skills in cat lab and with with Eric's help, you know, using this Docker. Are we okay with that? Okay. Okay. So I think we'll. We'll stop here for the day. Um, 
And thank you for your attention. That was a lot of fun.